We follow students in Birmingham and Manchester. Cleaning this commode now, I know what one is. Juggling academic study. Nothing's going in. With home life <laughs> and work on the wards. You're never going to learn how to be a nurse until you're out there doing the nursing job. This time, self-doubt. Yes, yeah, I'm a little bit unsure about kind of the whole procedure. Slip-ups. First time I've ever done that. It's always a good sort of learning curve. And delicate negotiation. Oh, it's not going to hurt, I promise, but it hurts. No! no. As our nurses-to-be step up to the challenge of 21st century nursing. These days, there's no such thing as your typical student nurse. I love it when you throw drumsticks into the crowd and there are people fighting over your stick and you're like, yeah, that's it right there. But for now, focus on the job in hand, it's gonna be a nurse. 29-year-old Graham, rock drummer, family man, and now nurse to be. We do need one egg. Graham packed in a steady job with the Highways Agency for his new career. Some people think I'm crazy for taking the pay drop and coming back and doing this challenge, especially at my stage in life at 29. But the way I look at it is that I want to be a nurse, so I'm willing to take that sacrifice to go and do something that I want to do. Yeah, that cupcake ain't the boss of you, you're the boss of that cupcake, come on! <laughs> Graham's challenge begins on the coronary care unit at the Royal Bolton Hospital. Three years as a St John's volunteer means he's confident at the sharp end. Easy peasy, thank you very much. But this morning, he's playing on a bigger stage. Thomas needs a new pacemaker. Let's wash my hands. And Graham's been invited to join the action. To actually pull on the scrubs and get into the theatre with all the machines beeping away and people doing their jobs, to be in there with them whilst they're doing it, it's awesome. It's a rare opportunity for a first-year student, and Graham wants to prove himself. Oh, good. Right. So, uh, do you want to tell me what we're doing today? Pacemaker. Pacemaker. Yeah. Right. Can you tell me anything about the risks associated with pacing? Oh. Sometimes I'm caught completely off guard, and they'll ask me a question, I'm just like, oh? Can you think of anything related to punches that we might have? <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll, no doubt I'll probably know the answer somewhere deep down there, but because I've been put on the spot, it can take me a few seconds sometimes to be like, um... What, what are we at risk of puncturing? Uh, the lungs, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, exactly. During the operation, Graham's job, under the watch of theatre nurse okay. James, is to keep the kit sterile. Be careful. Do it from a height, then you don't touch... Important that you don't get too close to the uh, sterile field. And to make sure that what goes in comes out again. Four needles, two sutures. Thank you. Foreign objects can get left behind. Yay, got it. Graham has to get these numbers right. A little bit scary to think that quite literally you could have someone's life in your hands and you no know, small error could have massive repercussions to both the individual and yourself and the trust and the whole bigger picture. So yes, it's uh, it's quite daunting, but you've got to have the faith in the training that you receive and the people around you. It's scary, but you get it done. Ten miles away in Salford. I just woke up and all these people were staring at me. <laughs> in a university lab mocked up as a hospital ward. Doctor, please, can you come to the ward? There seems to be a patient that's having a seizure. Unorthodox patients. She is still this guy. In a wig. With mystery ailments. Oh, oh are you oh, OK? No. I don't know, it feels so good. Test students' knowledge. The top of his body and his head oh, was right. shaking. Oh, was it? Without putting real lives at risk. Hello, are you OK, Jake? How are you feeling? <coughs> I'm just going to do some observations. Is that OK, Jake? I'm just going to check your... What's that mean? I'm just going to check your breathing and just make, make sure it's Danielle. 25-year-old third-year Danielle is nearing the end of her degree. Can't breathe very well. Okay. <laughs> it's okay, can't I? Simlab staff role-play patients and anxious relatives. <laughs> it's okay, can't I? Help I'm just going to take your temperature first, okay, Jay, just to see how hot you are. By the third year, students are expected to be able to spot what's wrong for themselves. 
His breathing is obviously is getting faster. Um, I can't breathe so good. Okay, okay, yeah, I'm just going to go and speak to the nurse. Does he sound wheezy at all? Uh, yeah, he does sound wheezy, yeah, and um, he is struggling to breathe still. Have you had a listen to his chest at all? Yeah, okay, I'll listen to his chest. Are you happy doing that? Yeah, no, yeah, it's fine, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he is breathless, yeah. Um, is respiratory rate? I'll just do his respiratory rate now, okay. Danielle has missed a reading. In the control room, coordinator Leah ups the ante to see if she notices. So drop the stats to 92 because they've not responded to them being at 94. So we drop the stats and hope that they'll pick up on that. SATs, blood oxygen saturation levels, should be between 95 and 100%. Yeah, he starts to just dropping a little bit now, which means that the oxygen in his blood is, is obviously going to a level where we'd give oxygen now. Just going to put this mask on, OK? Are you OK? <coughs> 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 it's always, it's Leah raises the bar again. <coughs> Jay, it's OK. It's okay. The oxygen's not working. <coughs> Can somebody do something? Danielle notices and changes <coughs> tack. now, OK. Got the medication. Come on, Jay, it's OK. Jake needs drugs to be administered quickly, straight into his lungs. You're very good, aren't you? Hey, very good. I know. You don't like this one? I know, I know you don't. But has he had his nebulizer? He's having his nebulizer now. Brilliant, OK, and what are his saturations now? His saturations better now, 96. Good. And we're going to stop the clinical scenario there. OK. It did feel as probably as real as it could feel. To be honest, I did feel like I got into a good act of role play. There was a few things that I did that, obviously, now looking back has really helped and will help me now in practice. Danielle's real patients on her forthcoming placement might be less forgiving. Thank you. Okay, well done, guys. Thank you. Right, which finger are we putting this on? That one. Might need a new plaster. 20 year old Abu is also in his third and final year. He is partially deaf but that's not held him back in pursuing his dream of becoming a nurse. Because of my deafness, I thought that may limit me. It's not something that's limiting me, but it's something that pushed me further. Abu's on placement at Royal Manchester Children's Hospital. You need to check your muscles. Good boy. Let's see how the professor's doing. Muscles. Muscles, yeah. Leggy, steady, go. You feel it? Abu knows just how it feels to be a young patient. As a teenager, he spent three months in hospital with a serious lung infection. I couldn't breathe for myself, basically. <clears throat> and the right side of my lung collapsed as well. My vocal cords were paralysed. I couldn't talk. One of the doctors actually broke down in tears and said, we've done everything we can, but we don't really know if we're going to survive. A high five for that. The nurses were, they were just fantastic people. They were like, they were like angels, really. I just thought, wouldn't it be nice for me to do something like that for other people? I want to be like this, not just as a nurse, but also as a person. Abu's been placed on a surgical ward. As a final year student, he can't expect handholding from mentor Heather. Bed five, bed six, seven, and bed eight for today. Is that okay? Yeah. So Occupying just... bed eight is four year old Amelia. She's coming with a fracture on her left leg, so I'm just about to go and see her. Um, she did go to therapy later on this morning. Five days ago, she was hit by a car in front of her dad, Matthew. The car came right near the kerb, and what Melia had done must have swung her leg out, and it took her leg. And nothing we could do. Amelia needs metal plates to fix her broken bones. It's Abu's job to make sure she's ready for surgery. Hi, Amelia, I'm just needing a small thing you to check um, how your heart's beating and how your breathing is. That's just a little sticky plaster that I'm going to stick on your finger. It won't hurt you, I promise it won't hurt. It's a test of wills, and Amelia's not giving in. So I'd like to put it on for you then. No. No. Just with her fingers. Finger. Yeah. This one. No, don't let it dad. Oh, it's not gonna hurt, I promise, won't hurt. No. Look, Dad just put on your finger as well, look. It won't hurt. See, it doesn't hurt at all. No. 
Come on. No. You can try it. Without the obs, Amelia will not be allowed to go into theatre. Teddy bears having it done. Wow, look, do you want to do you try it? Look, it just makes your finger go red, that's it. What will hurt? It just makes your finger glow. No. Amelia won, Abu nil. She fell up her and she's like, I don't want any more wires to me. And she thought to be left alone, really. Amelia's surgery is scheduled for 10 30. You know what? We've been trying for the past hour now, actually, yeah? I think we've started at nine. And like now, ten past ten, it's sort of like the way it's against time kind of thing. At Royal Manchester Children's Hospital, third year student Abu is locked in a battle of wills. Without basic checks, Amelia can't go for surgery. As a final year student, Abu's expected to find his own solutions. Hey, um, I was just wondering um, if you could just come over and um, help up with Amelia. She's feeling a bit grumpy this morning. In this case, the ward's on site play specialists. What do you think you can make for the nurse? Can you make him a cake? A pretend yeah. cake? Yeah. Here we go. Squash. Ooh. It looks like a pizza base, don't it? Yeah, it's nearly round. While Amelia's distracted, the team try again. That's absolutely fine. Good girl. Put your finger on. Is that right? Yeah. This will tell us how many boyfriends you've got. One. Three, two, one. Go. Oh. There we are, all done. Can we take it off now? Yeah, we can. You ready? It's taken over an hour, but Amelia is finally given the go-ahead for theatre. One more it's five minutes before she's due to go. But the struggle's not over. After surgery, Amelia will need her obs done all over again. In Bolton, first year Graham is on placement on the coronary care unit. Perfect. Demanding for some, but Graham is confident he has what it takes. Loads of day. Yeah. In certain situations when I've been dealing with patients. I have surprised myself where it's like, I know what I'm doing here actually, that's, that's really satisfying. Graham has experience as a St John's ambulance volunteer, but hospital nursing is a whole new ball game. As well as his previous experience and training with St John's is a strength, it could also be a bit of a weakness for Graham. Sometimes he's probably gonna to have to remember that although he has got experience, his actual limitations on the ward, he just needs to be aware that he's conforming to those. Okay, let's go. The drugs round is a crucial part of patient care. The heart rate's 56, his blood pressure's okay, so yeah. I think we should just give him what he's prescribed. Awesome. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be a lot, in it? OK, we're missing an awful lot of things. Yeah, we are, actually, we? which is a bit... It's a pretty um, bare cupboard. We're doing well so far, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Docu-thing. I don't think we've even got them. We've not even got them, no. The drugs in the cupboard don't match Mohan's chart. Claire spots Graham's error. We've got wrong, um, This is Karen's. We've had tens. Is that again? Right, that's why. <laughs> wrong chart. <laughs> Silly. Of course. Good lesson just to check anyway. Uh -huh. Yeah. This looks more like it. It does. Medication errors and such are really dangerous and it's something that we're always aware of as qualified. So even if we'd have got through dispensing all those medications, we do the check against the prescription and the armband or the patient confirms who they are. So you've got many different checks before you get to that point where you would have picked up probably that there would have been a little bit of an error. First time I've ever done that. I know. Well, it's always a good sort of learning curve, Graham, so don't be too alarmed. These things happen. It's really important to, if you are going to make any mistakes, make it whilst you're a trainee. I'll put some uh, water into your aspirin to get that dissolved for you. You can say, OK, I recognise I've made that mistake. What would I do differently? And then you can look back, change maybe the certain way you go about things, change a little bit of the way that you practice and make yourself better as a result of it. <laughs> Whoops. When she's not on the ward, Danielle spends as much time as she can with her son. When he was one, Leon was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. It was a massive shock when the doctor said, yeah, we think that he's got cerebral palsy. 
it was horrible, it really was. I remember just crying for like a full week after that. It was the hardest thing ever. If it's hard, <laughs> do it again. Because that means that it makes you stronger, doesn't it? Eh? Danielle's in her third year and the workload has ramped up. There's a lot of responsibility now, which I think it's, it's good because next year we're going to be out there as qualified nurses. I think you feel kind of, it, three years you've got like a long time and then it, you finally start your third year and think, wow, like one year, be qualified. Today, Danielle is with the district nursing team. Her mentor, Hannah, wants her to lead today's visits. She'll be dressing wounds on her own for the first time. Third year, it is so full on. The work, the level of the work, the responsibilities when out in placement. It's really important now for me to be able to get things right as a student. So to give me the confidence and the competence really to become a qualified nurse. Hello, Joan. Hello. First patient of the day is 90-year-old Joan. How are you? Good. I wish it was all right. Come to do your leg. She's just got an area of weeping edema, which is right at the bottom of the heel. Right, okay. So we've been giving them a good wash in the bowl, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to take this off first, OK? Yeah. Edema is a build-up of fluid that often affects the elderly. That's lovely. Make sure you do all the foot. Is it painful for you, Joan? No. No? No. No, does it not cause you any pain in your legs? No. no. Can't really see a wound. You can't? No. The wound is in the crease. I'll show you where the crease is. It's right in right, there. OK, so you can't actually yeah. see it, but you can't can just see it. Obviously it's... Right, yeah, so... But by using the washers, we're getting in there and cleaning it out. Yep. I've not really come across people that are housebound before. And to Joan, she can't even get out of a chair, so it, it's really sad. The main thing is that you're comfortable. I've not really seen legs so bad, actually, as Joan's. It's a real eye-opener. Totally different compared to anything that I'm used to. See you later. Yeah, lovely bye. meeting you and take care. We'll see you again now. Take yeah, care. Bye, bye. bye now. There it is. District nurses can see up to 25 patients a day. Susan has had complications following surgery. Her wounds need repacking with a sterile dressing, a new procedure for Danielle. Am I pulling this off with it? Yeah, you're taking it all off, yeah. Is that the packing? Yeah, that's it. And you can just take that, there's a little bit in that bottom wound that you can just take out. You can use your fingers. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, I'm a little bit unsure about kind of the whole procedure. If you rip it up like you would. Yeah. And I just put it on top of the wound. Oh, right, okay. So just... Yeah. And then you're going to use that to feed it in. Keep going. Is that okay? Yeah. It was the first time I've ever packed a wound and yeah, I was surprised because when I was packing it, it was like going on forever. That's brilliant. I think I like packing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was holiday packing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, definitely. How do you feel? All right. Yeah, good? Yeah. Comfortable? Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> I've passed. I feel like I've learnt quite a lot, actually, to be honest. Um, it's been a varied mixture of patients and conditions which I've seen, so it, it's been really interesting. See you later. See you soon. You take Bye. care. At Royal Manchester Children's Hospital, Abu's young patient is back from surgery. Post-op, Amelia's observations need doing all over again. She doesn't sound too happy, so I don't think it's going to be easy. I'm sorry, I know I've got to do this again. No. Once more, she's having none of it. No. The play team that helped Abu earlier have gone home for the day. I'm feeling the pressure a bit more, feeling the heat. I feel like I'm, I'm just like on my own trying to like figure out ways that could possibly work. And you can get another sticker on that chart, can't we? No. The nurse will get into trouble. It won't hurt you, I promise it won't hurt. No. Get it on. No. Well, you can do this, it'll only be literally big 10 seconds. No. Close to defeat, Abu checks in with mentor Heather. It's challenging him today, it's getting him to think of other things instead of just having a straightforward, easy patient that will just sit there and let you do things. So it's quite good for him to experience that side of the nursing. Yeah. Do you want me to find the biggest oh. bubbles on yeah. the ward? <gasps> You'll be the only person with the biggest no. bubbles on the ward. Oh, no. you put it on your toe. Let me take a minute. No. Oh. Can we just feel your hand then? Can you let us feel your hand? Can I just borrow your cup? If all else fails, 
observations the traditional way. Between me and Heather, we kind of did it in a way, and she didn't realise. So Heather said, let me have a feel of your hand, and she was really checking for her heart rate. And I was just watching her breathing, so we both were doing, so I was doing the rest, and she was doing the heart rate. What did you get a rest for? Rest was a 22. Right, lovely. Very good. Oh, done. Yay! Yeah. Got it. Abu turned down a law degree at Oxford University to study nursing. Patients like Amelia convince him he made the right choice. She definitely kept me on my toes. I'm quite pleased that by the end of this shift I've overcome those challenges. I can go home with this man knowing that I've achieved something. Next time, challenging children. Sometimes they just don't understand what dangers it can actually cause. New discoveries. I mean, it's not every day you come across what you come across in a hospital. And for one student, a bombshell. Come get back on the ward. I'm just so fed up.